computers aren't the thing. They're the thing that gets us to the thing. Hey, what's up YouTube? I'm James and welcome back to another episode of Vintage Tech Junkie. Today we're going to be talking about bulletin board systems, or BBSs as they were called back in the day. That clip you just saw was from the hit AMC TV show Halt and Catch Fire. Now if you've never watched Halt and Catch Fire, I really highly encourage you to do so. It's one of my most favorite TV shows of all time. And the theme of the TV show is set back in the 80s and 90s, back when personal home computing was just starting to come about. Um, it's a fictional story based on true life events, so I really encourage you to check it out. Now one of the main premises of that TV show was the bulletin board system. So if you're not sure what a bulletin board system is, don't worry, I'm going to walk you through it. But essentially the premise of a bulletin board system is any computer user back in the day that had a phone line and a modem could set up a piece of software that allowed another computer to dial in and exchange information. So prior to the internet, services we have today like Facebook, Instagram, X, or even YouTube were not available back then. Everything was way more decentralized. So what you ended up with was a bunch of hobbyist users, for the most part, having their computer set up to allow incoming phone calls so other users could call in and they could exchange information. A BBS system consisted of several features that are very similar to a lot of the things that we have today on the internet. So typically on any given board that you would call, you would at least have something like a message base that had messages from a number of users that were essentially called bulletins that, that you could read and respond to. Very similar to the way we use Facebook today when we scroll through a feed. Um, some of the other things that were pretty much available on any BBS that you called was a file area. And that was basically used for users to upload files and users to download files. So you could upload files that you have and share them with other users. Now you also had email. Uh, but the big difference between the email back then and the email today, email back then was primarily constricted to the bulletin board that you were calling. So you could message other users on that bulletin board system, but you typically couldn't message another user from across the country connecting on another bulletin board system. Now there were some services that came along later in the BBS years that interconnected a lot of the BBS system so that it could exchange emails from one BBS system to another, but that didn't happen early on. Another feature of most BBS systems were games. A lot of people got online to play what they call door games. Door games are essentially a gateway into an actual game that you can play online. A lot of these games were multiplayer games, but they weren't real time. So basically what you would do is log in and play your turns, and then someone else would log in and play their turns, and the whole game would kind of develop that way. Uh, very different than what we have for the real time gaming today, but it was still very fun nonetheless, especially when you've got a home computer system and you're able to connect up to other computers and interact with other people, it's just amazing. Now the story about how bulletin board systems came about is a very interesting one. The Great Blizzard of 1978 was one of the worst storms in Illinois history. 100 mile an hour winds whipped up snow drifts as high as 12 feet. Wind chills were so low that they caused railroad tracks to buckle and break. Northern Illinois, especially Chicago, ground to a halt, and a couple of snowed-in computer nerds created a major technological achievement. It was February 16, 1978, just after the Great Blizzard, when two Chicagoans, Ward Christensen and Randy Seuss, launched the first computerized bulletin board system, or BBS. They had met a few years earlier through the Chicago area computer hobbyist exchange and thought it would be cool to share the club's information over some kind of computerized messaging system. When the storm hit, they found themselves snowed in with time to tinker. Christensen wrote the software, Seuss built the hardware, and they created the whole system from scratch. They called their creation Computerized Bulletin Board System, or CBBS. Other members of the Computer Hobbyist Exchange used their computers to dial directly into a computer system in Seuss's basement. When they connected, they would read and share club messages and project ideas. The whole BBS thing was for our computer club to be able to produce newsletters. Seuss said in the 2005 film, The BBS, The Documentary. That was the whole idea of it. It worked. From wherever it went from then, fine. Seuss and Christensen revealed their technology in trade magazines and gave away the software for free. Their digital message exchange system inspired hundreds of computer hobbyists to build their own BBSs, planting the seeds that would grow into the modern internet. 
thanks so much for watching this episode. I really hope you enjoyed it. This will be part of a multi-part series. The next episode we'll be talking about building a device which will allow you to connect your older PC to the modern internet and connect to modern BBS systems running on the internet. Be sure to hit the like and subscribe button to stay tuned for future episodes. Thanks so much.